Good day. This is Doc Irwin, and this is Disaster Readiness and Risk Reduction. Welcome to MELC One Week One, Basic Concept of Disaster and Disaster Risk. Most essential learning competency, explain the meaning of disaster. For our objectives, we have determine the meaning of disaster, explain the concept of disaster, and last, enumerate the common disasters in the Philippines. So we will be using our learner's material, Disaster Readiness and Risk Reduction, Pivot 4A. So do not forget to use our official module. So before we go on with our um, lesson, so let us identify first the following events in the Philippines. So you have to guess the following pictures, whether uh, what kind of events these are. And for you to be able to identify it, you have to pause um, the video so that you can uh, take uh, some time no, for you to be able to identify it. Okay, so this is just um, a pretest of your um, actual knowledge on the lesson. So let us begin. All right, so what do you think this is? You are uh, given five seconds to answer. Okay, that is correct. So this is an aftermath of a typhoon. Let us continue. Okay, so what is this? Yes, that is correct. This is a volcanic eruption, specifically um, Mayan volcano eruption. How about this one? Can you guess this one? All right. So this is an El Nino phenomenon. Okay. As you can see on the picture, it is um, a rice field, no, but without water on it. Okay. So uh, later we will be uh, discussing the different uh, disasters in the Philippines, and I think one of them is El Nino. Okay, how about this one? Okay, so that is correct. So this is La Nina. La Nina is an opposite of El Nino. So if, if El Nino is um, long drought with high temperature, no? so La Nina is the opposite of it. Okay. How about this one? Okay, so that's correct. So... The answer is earthquake. So, what do you think is the reason why the Philippines is prone to different disasters or deep, different natural disasters? So, let us have this short discussion about uh, Philippines, a country prone to natural disasters. As stated, the Philippines has experienced from an inexhaustible number of deadly typhoons, earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, and other natural disasters. So what are the reasons? So as you can see on the illustration, I have here two illustrations, the one on the right. Uh, first is the Pacific Ring of Fire, wherein it is actually that region in the Pacific Ocean, no, extending to the North and uh, South America, no, wherein this is actually the line, no, it is a line of uh, volcanic um, volcanic activity, so there are a lot of volcanoes in the Pacific Ring of Fire, as well as um, the different fault lines. So that's why those uh, places that are included in the Pacific Ring of Fire, actually, they have active volcanic eruptions and active fault line uh, resulting to earthquakes. So there are earthquakes, uh, most of the time these are actually not felt by 
uh, humans, but uh, there are cases wherein the magnitude is quite high and we can be able to fill in. So in the in the subject, we will be talking more about earthquakes no? when we come to that lesson about earthquakes. Now, the picture at the bottom of the uh, slide is actually the, the Philippine map, the Asian map, no? half of it, and the Pacific Ocean. No? Uh, this is actually the reason why we always experience a typhoon in the Philippines because of the geographical location. So the, the one on the right side of the Philippines is the Pacific Ocean, wherein most of the typhoons are actually coming from. Okay, so let us now proceed to your first learning task. So this is under what's new, and it is found on your learner's material page two. The title of the learning task is Count Me In, wherein you have to write five disastrous events in the Philippines in the last five years. So you have to think, what are these five disastrous events in, the, in our country in the last five years? You can actually search in Google or you can just use your stock knowledge, no? since these are just new uh, because this is just the last five years. So you, uh, you have to write that down in your, uh, on your paper that you have to submit uh, during the retrieval of the activity sheets. However, I also sent some uh, Google link wherein you can just uh, upload your answers. So I hope that you will do this within the week. Okay, so let us talk about disaster. So what is a disaster? So as stated, it is a sudden calamitous occurrence that caused great harm, injury, destruction, and devastation to life and property. So you have to remember this definition because um, not all events in the Philippines are actually considered as a disaster. So there should be these elements like uh, it causes a great harm, there, there could be a loss of life, or there could also be uh, distractions of properties. So meaning to say that if all these things uh, will be the, the effects of a certain natural phenomena, let's say for example uh, a typhoon, then that's the only time that we can consider it as a disaster. So we will be talking more about this uh, in the next lessons. So another explanation is that it disrupts the usual course of life, causing both physical and emotional distress, as well as an intense feeling of helplessness and hopelessness. So meaning to say now, one of the effects of a disaster is that um, there will be disruption of the kind of life as we know it. So for example, in the COVID-19 pandemic, um, a lot of things like, for example, um, we can no longer um, touch each other or hug each other. Um, there is a physical distancing and uh, we usually uh, wear uh, our face mask and face shield when, when going out. And there are a lot of um, health protocols. So the life as we know it before, actually right now, is not the kind of life that we have. Right? So there is disruption. So um, another example is that um, when there is um, a typhoon. So for example, in, in the effects of the Yolanda. No? So there are a lot of uh, properties. There are a lot of um, lives that were lost. And they did not uh, continue eventually their life after the typhoon. So it, takes, uh, it took a lot of uh, months for them to be able to recover. So that is what we call as disruption in the usual course of life. So there could be physical and emotional distress, no? And then there, there could also be a feeling of helplessness and hopelessness. Okay, another definition is that it is often a result of the combination of the exposure to a hazard. Uh, we will be talking more about that exposure later on. And conditions of vulnerability that are present and insufficient supply or insufficient capacity of or measures to reduce or cope with the potential negative consequences or exposure. So all of this must be present 
for for you to call a certain uh, natural phenomena to become a disaster. So meaning to say that for a disaster to happen, uh, there should be exposure, vulnerability, and hazard. So the three elements must be present for us to be able to determine that there is really a disaster. For example, uh, let's say that there is no hazard. So if there will be no hazard, even if there is vulnerab uh, vulnerability as well as um, exposure, so there will be no uh, disaster or disaster risk. Now, let's say for example that there is, uh, yes, there is a natural hazard or there is a hazard, uh, but uh, there is less exposure and um, there will there's also no no vulnerability so therefore the risk is lesser okay because the higher the risk the the greater the tendency that there will be disaster so when the three elements are present there is a high risk that there will be a disaster okay so let us now continue with this one so uh, disaster can be divided into natural or man-made. So if it is a natural uh, disaster, it is actually, an, um, these are natural phenomena that is caused by natural forces. So it is governed by uh, the laws of nature. Uh, this includes um, earthquakes, uh, typhoon, volcanic eruptions, uh, hurricanes, fires, tornadoes, extreme temperatures like uh, El Nino or this could also be the opposite of it or the, uh, or the La Nina. Now, um, if it is man-made, this can be divided into technological or industrial disasters. So when we speak of man-made, it is caused by uh, human population. It is, it is caused by human activities. So technological or uh, industrial disasters, um, terrorism or violence. So, so for example, there's bombing. So it could be a man-made disaster, especially if there are a lot of people who, who will die or who died in that, in that bombing. Or uh, what if it is, uh, it is a civil war, just like uh, what, is, uh, what happened before in Africa. So it is known to be as complex humanitarian emergencies, wherein a lot of uh, human population will be displaced. There could also be um, death among people, destruction of property. So these are all considered to be as man-made disaster. Now, sometimes you might ask, is fire man-made or natural? Okay, so this could this could be natural if the cause of fire is natural. For example, uh, during El Nino or high temperature in other countries, wherein just one spark of uh, leaves, of uh, dried leaves in the, in the grass can cause uh, grass fire and then eventually might lead to forest fire just like um, what happened before in Australia. Now, if it is man-made fire, for example, there, there is this house or um, and then somebody will will uh, light that house, no? Uh, susunugin niya, sasadyain niyang sunugin. So that is man-made, okay? So uh, fire could be uh, man-made or uh, natural, but most of the time it is natural. Um, there are only few um, uh, disasters that are actually uh, man made fire. Okay, so let us now proceed to your learning task number two define it on my own. So, this is found also on page two of your uh, learner's material, and this is the directions. So in three to five sentences, define the word disaster based on your own experience. So this time, you'll be the one to define what disaster is, okay? So again, it is based on your own experience. So do not forget to write it down to your on your paper. So now, on what's more, this will be your learning task uh, three, which is entitled as Fix Me, wherein uh, you are given um, jumbled letters that you have to arrange in order for you to be able to identify the natural phenomenon, okay? So arrange the given jumbled letters to identify the correct terminology. The definition will help you to derive the correct answer. So aside from the, the clue, which are the jumbled letters, you are given definitions, no? So uh, this can be found on your uh, learner's material, 
page 4. So do not forget to, to write down your answer on your paper. So after uh, going through all those learning tasks, you have to answer also these questions under what I have learned. So this time you will be, uh, you have to write what are those things that you have learned on this module. And then you have to write two things that you found interesting. Okay. Again, uh, it will be written down on your um, uh, answer sheets or, or on your paper. Then at the last of it is what I can do. So what can you do? So do you think you are, are relatively well prepared when a disaster might uh, affect your community, either natural or man-made, as well as to its effects? So this time you're being asked, no? You have to ask yourself, after undergoing this module, are you now prepared in, in, in case that there will be disaster in your community, in our local community? Then you have to list down the five important things that you need to prepare in order to lessen the possible danger that you and your family might encounter when a disaster strikes. Explain your answers briefly. So this is found on your uh, learner's material page 5 on uh, DRR uh, Pivot 4A. All right, so that ends MELC 1 week 1. We will be talking about uh, MELC 2 week 1 in the next video lesson. So thank you for watching.